So this is part of the WD-40 demonstration. One of the things I'd like to show you firstly is how I get my WD-40 into this great liquid form rather than just having to use the, oh whoops, where's it gone? The spray can into the paint, which I see so many people do. Now I'm outside, which means I'm in an okay place to do this. If your studio is inside, I do not recommend you do this at all because you'll get too many gases around you. It's best to take your WD-40 can outside. And remember, you're looking for the silicon type of WD-40. Get your nozzle ready. You get a container and you put the nozzle in and squirt, squirt, squirt. And you can, you can even see the wiggle of all those gases coming out and the bubbling into the container. The containers become very, very cold. And I make sure I really mark this because it just looks like normal oil, you know, even water really, like the consistency is like water by the time it settles down from the bubbles. And you just don't want to be mixing this with anything or accidentally using it for something else. The other interesting thing that I want to show you, hopefully the camera will pick this up. See that, see that where the rubbers melt, or the, sorry, the plastics melted rather? That's because of how cold the WD-40 is as it sprays out and it, I guess it's like a reverse melt. It just sort of causes that chemical reaction within the plastic. So I imagine it's probably even safer still to be doing this technique, which is once again, keeping it right away from your face, releasing it into there. It's probably safer to do it in glass, even compared to what I'm doing it here. But as you can see, like I was saying, that place there where it's sort of caused that plastic to change is because I've used this container so long. And that's quite a lot of WD-40 in there, and that will that will last me for so long. I mean, I hardly use any. I've pre-mixed quite a few amount of paints, except for this last one here. I'm doing a neon pour. This last paint here has not been finally mixed. It's just had the basic um, paint. I'm using an IKEA paint today, the neon brands and um, it's actually just a poster paint. So that in itself is further added to the experiment. I have my pre already made pouring component here, which is part global medium pouring medium, global brand and part Floetron. Um, the other, as I said before, the others have already been mixed. So now I just want to get this to our good pouring consistency like all the other paints are. That's still much too thick so I'm going to be adding water. I use a dropper as you can see to really get that sense of control. It's very easy to quickly add too much water. Uh, this, these are little shot glasses that you can pick up from your local Target, Kmart, probably Walmart in America. That's still too thick for my liking. Um, and two dollar shops, party suppliers have them. And here in Australia, we get a pack of a f of forty of these for around two dollars. I actually try to continually reuse them. I like to keep my plastic usage down as much as possible. Um, it's still too thick. in the background. I live in country Victoria and we're at around, I think we're around 7.30 this evening. Oh sorry, that's much better. That's the consistency we're looking for now and I'm going to add my WD-40 directly into this and I'm going to show you how much I use. About that. You can see that it just sort of sits on the top. Now, contrary to what a lot of other people do, I actually really mix this in really well. And the reason I do this is because I have found that if I mix it really well into the paint, 
I don't get any of that floating residual on the top that many people are talking about where they're having to remove the oil or the silicon from the top of a painting once it's dried. I have not had that problem. Well, we can see the WD-40 has actually helped thicken this up again. So I am going to just stir that a little bit more. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm okay with that. No, I think I'm going to add just a tiny bit more water. Stirring, stirring. That's better. I can even feel it through my stirring stick that that's adapted much more efficiently now. Very good. Okay. So as I was saying, um, oh, what was I saying? Yes, that's right. So I do mix my WD-40 in really, really thoroughly to my paints because I like to make sure that it's all mixed in with the paints so that it doesn't have that issue that many people talk about and that being that the silicon um, stays on top of the painting once it's dried. I like to give my cups all a squirt of WD-40 before I do my mixing or rather my layering and that's because I get every drop out of the cup without an issue. It possibly helps with the cell development too but I'm not really sure um, because of all the different additives and all the pouring mediums I use but I still always do that so that I can get all of the uh, paint out. The base paint that we're going to be using today is a purple black and I don't know if you can see whether that's got the purple coming through. You can't, but nonetheless, off we go. I'm going to be putting a bit of black in now. And I think um, with our layering, I'm actually going to start with some silver because I just like to have that first bit of black and silver coming together. Next I'm going to do the green because the green's ridiculously vibrant. I'm just checking my I'm checking my colors here right now. Yep, the pouring consistency is good. Nice high level so that we get some really good cells. Next, some pink. think my paint is too thick have a look at that it's just sitting like I have done a, a puddle pour into the cup and it's not even cutting through into the black so I'm going to recheck this consistency firstly checking my purple black yep that's lovely and runny and what's going on with these little ones It is breaking, so you probably can do with a bit more. Stir, 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 stir. I might just pop you on pause while I get into fixing these paints consistency so we don't have that puddle effect. Okay, I've got some paints to a consistency that I'm much happier with. So we'll do a take two. Once again, I'm going to get my cup, give it a squirt of WD-40 and get some of that black paint into there. Or a dirty pour. 
really astonished. Okay, so this is going to be a really interesting experiment. Let's have a look at how this has gone. Like it's been sitting there for 20 minutes and it looks really just sat like a puddle. Well, I can see how it wants to break up. So I'm imagining when I pull my stick through, it will do the magic. Look at this nice bit of green. back and let's see how this next flip cup goes I'm just going to do it I've decided on a flip cup I can see a lot of
I didn't realize that I had that actually recording in a uh, slow motion before so I have no idea how that'll turn out let's zoom in a bit and see how things are going well we can definitely see some cells forming you can see a lot of air bubbles there too I um, gee I'm so tempted to do a swipe it's almost like the colors are just sitting underneath waiting to be revealed but look they're forcing through here like I don't know if you can see that tiny little cell there over there let's try and zoom into it whoa that green one it's looking gorgeous and certainly really some interesting stuff happening but be patient be patient they always say oh it's such a problem for me I just get really antsy and want to see what's going on or oh, there is some really good stuff going on might just turn this around I can see where the uh, table's not quite level we might just let this roll out a bit more now it is quite thick isn't it it's um, interesting using this uh, Ikea poster paint neon poster paint and what it is and isn't doing and how it's wanting to continually glug all right it's gonna to have to have a swipe for sure are we ready what will I use for a swipe well I think I might use just what's handy I've got some um, skincare wipes here that I use that are on site always just to keep my hands clean I might just them into strips like this so I can do some swirling with my swipes because this is a circular board and doing a straight across swipe I don't know I don't feel inclined to do that I feel like I want to go around in circles and keep the circular pattern I'm nervous are you ready to do it with me maybe we'll start like this okay ready let's just go now here we go I'm going to go the other way. Just get rid of some of this black. happening is it I wonder what will happen if I just pull a fork through and really stir those paints up no it doesn't want to I wonder what's happened with this mix all right let's do something different and drizzle something across here something across here and we'll do the yellow and we'll do the orange and let's swipe again I'm not really swiping them, I'm kind of dragging. What a funny experiment. Though I must tell you, there are some really beautiful things starting to happen.
I'm just going to puddle pour now, just see what happens. Because remember earlier, we tried to layer the paints. Look how much they're thick and they've just become just from sitting around just for that. I, really, it's only been t maybe 20 minutes and they have changed to become really thick. They're right back to that real gluey consistency rather than having that nice run in it. I um, have lost the focus completely now of the original experiment because I really believe that these poster paints have behaved in such a different way that was unexpected that we're going to be creating and doing something that wasn't intended and that is the beauty of experimental work. Now I am a cell seeker so part of me is rather disappointed because I was hoping to have one of those fabulous paintings that you see around um, where the outcome is really much like a beautiful opal and alas that's not the case for today but let's see what we can get happening here I'm going to pull all this out and what I'm what I'm actually hoping to do is get some of the darker paint pushed on the outer side so that I can swipe it over the puddle in the middle but now that I've said that out loud I actually think I might do some fanning through it and see what that brings because of the heavy uh, way that the paint has become more thick I'm going to give it a squirt of WD-40 to see if we can get any cells in our next swipe that way it was quite rather heavy handed of me by the way um, So I'm liking this over here now. So I'm going to swipe like that. Are we ready? Are we ready? I'm nervous. Swipe. And now I'm going to bring it back. Swipe. Just so it doesn't want to sit on top of itself. It's a really interesting experiment. Now I'm just pulling and pushing the paint. Now, once again, I'm going to circulate and drag this through. Oh, I can't do too much because I'm actually just mixing the paint now rather than revealing anything. Now, what do I feel like I want to do? I want to squirt it again and then tilt. This is um, really fabulous now. Some of the stuff that you can't see that I can see, especially with the shimmer, which is why I'm adding this now, is uh, spectacular. Goo. And that is okay. Let's see what happens now when I just let some of this drizzle off. Look at the fabulous mess. Like this is the ultimate in terms of a happy, messy life. Beautiful excess paint. It's gorgeous on my hands. Right, I'm going to torch it next. It's uh, become quite an acceptable piece, believe it or not, especially with the shimmer features. 
Torching is doing nothing. How bizarre. One of the most bizarre experiences I've ever had. Okay, totally unexpected outcomes all round. Oh, we've got a few cells happening. Got some really beautiful features though, and things are still shifting and taking shape. I want to talk about the paint because that's what's going on here absolutely the paint is the Ikea Marla and I'm just reading to see if I can see any of the ingredients and there's nothing on the package let's have a quick look on the pamphlet and I'll read it out to you what it says when I can find it how to use the paint will leave permanent stains on most surfaces and materials however immediately wash the area with soap and luke water might give good results always protect children's clothes and the surrounding floor shake well before use okay and the description of the paint in English is just simply this name product type fluorescent paint and it then goes on to talk about the package quantity of being eight and the volume being 640 mils and it doesn't tell us what type of paint it is now if it was a poster paint which I don't believe it was it would have behaved differently I am wondering if well I just have no idea what's happened but nonetheless I'm happy with the outcome it's not what I was expecting at all and nor was the process um, I hope you enjoyed this very gone wrong experiment but remember we do a lot of learnings this way um, I can tell that you can see how this has taken form and the uh, beautiful things that are happening regardless of what we actually did so I'm taking you off the iPod now of the tripod not the iPod and we're going over to have a look just trying to be aware of where the cells are to show you what's going on here look at that I wouldn't be surprised if over the next hour this really slowly takes a different form in itself it's changing so rapidly I mean you can see the shimmer coming through now with the silver and the golds um, and delicate cells starting to push themselves out but if becoming more obvious as the minutes going past so what a fabulous unexpected experiment and I really look forward to showing you this in the morning uh, when it's had its development time and started to dry thanks for watching